There are times when archaeologists go looking for one thing, but end up finding something entirely different. There are also times when amazing archaeological discoveries are made completely by accident. Both events make for great stories, and we've got some fabulous tales of unexpected discoveries packed into this video, plus some plain and simple great archaeological finds. During their pomp, the Baths of Trajan served as the largest bathing and leisure complex in ancient Rome. Thanks to the existence of ancient documents, we know that work on the baths was completed during the reign of Emperor Trajan in July of the year 109, although they were started during the reign of Emperor Domitian 13 years earlier. It's thought that the architect was the famed Apollodorus of Damascus. Once complete, the baths remained in constant use until the early 5th century. Sometime after that, people started taking the baths apart a piece at a time so the marble and brick could be used in other construction projects. The current appearance of what's left of the baths has remained the same since the 16th century. Several famous works of art have been discovered within the footprint of the baths over the years, including the famous sculpture Lao Kun and his sons, which was found by accident in 1506 during the creation of a vineyard. More recently, a 50-foot-long mosaic featuring depictions of Apollo, several muses, and a series of capitals and columns was found during an archaeological dig in 2011. While we're talking about amazing ancient Roman discoveries, let's talk about the Crypta Neapolitana. It's the Roman equivalent of a road tunnel built close to Naples in the year 37 BCE. The tunnel is an impressive feat of construction, measuring more than 2,100 feet, and was made to connect Naples to the town of Pizzuli and the Phlegrian Fields. Before the tunnel was built, Naples and Paluzzi were separated by an enormous marsh, which was thought to be impenetrable. Several workaround roads had been built in the past, but they were long and dangerous. As trade between Naples and Pizzuli grew in value, a solution had to be found the architect, Lucius Cocaeus Octus, was entrusted with the project. He did such a good job that his tunnel was still in use as a roadway until the 20th century, albeit with the assistance of several restorative works carried out over the course of several centuries. The Crypta Neapolitana even became a makeshift bomb shelter during the Second World War. Its use as a road tunnel was finally ended by a landslide during the 1950s after which it was repaired and reopened as an archaeological site. You might have seen our next artifact in the news recently. It's an unusual ancient Egyptian coffin, and in January 2023, it was returned to Cairo from the United States of America after a campaign to have it repatriated. The unusual thing about the coffin is that the likeness of the person painted on it is green. We know who the coffin was made for. It was a male priest called Ankenmat. We also know when it was made. It was the late dynastic period more than 2,300 years ago. The reason it's been returned to Cairo is that it entered the USA illegally. It was looted from a necropolis in Abu Sur years ago, after which it was sold to buyers in Germany before being sold again to the Houston Museum of Natural Science in 2013. There's no suggestion that the museum was aware that the sarcophagus had been looted. It won't have been an easy thing for the museum to give up. Most experts agree that its value is somewhere in the region of $1 million. In April 2022, dredge workers at Dengue Quarry in Kent, England, were going about their typical daily work when they made a discovery so astonishing that it went on to be featured in a documentary made by the BBC. It's a large 16th century shipwreck, and it baffled experts when it was found because it's more than a thousand feet inland. The Elizabethan era vessel still hasn't been identified, so it's been nicknamed the Ship of Dungeness. Around a hundred timbers of the ship's hull still remain, but it's thought that it was 80 feet long when it was complete. Tree ring dating checks carried out on the timbers have revealed the wood used in the ship's construction is English oak and was cut down between 1558 and 1580. Dengue Quarry has existed as a shingle quarry since the 1940s, and the vessel has presumably been there this entire time, so it's remarkable that it wasn't discovered until now. Very few ships that were built during the reign of the famous Queen Elizabeth I in England have survived to the present day, so the remains of the vessel are a precious archaeological resource. 
Archaeological excavations have been ongoing at the site of Aizanoi, an ancient city in Turkey, for several years. They've turned up some remarkable things. And in December 2022, archaeologists there struck gold again, metaphorically speaking, when they found the severed stone heads of several Greek gods. Specifically, they found the heads of Euros, Dionysus, Heracles, plus several more. As they're made of stone, it's hard to say exactly when the sculptures were created. Azenoi was founded during the days of the Phrygia Kingdom during the Hellenistic period. It was controlled by the Romans from around 2100 years ago, but most of its monumental buildings were erected during the 3rd century. It's most likely that the stone heads come from that period. The city eventually fell into decline during the 7th century with several buildings on the former Temple Hill torn down to make way for a new citadel. All of these heads would have once been attached to bodies, but the bodies are nowhere to be found. The decapitation was a deliberate act, but we don't know why it was done. The adobe complex of Taos Pueblo in Taos, New Mexico, USA has been continually inhabited for more than 1,000 years. It ought to be famous, but most Americans don't even know it exists. It's the only living Native American community ever to be given World Heritage Site status by UNESCO, and is also listed as the National Historic Landmark by the U.S. government. Despite all these accolades, the full history of Taos Pueblo is largely unknown. The Taos Indians keep an oral history, but the history isn't shared with outsiders. Today, there are only around 150 of them left. While it might look like one large ramshackle building, it's actually made up of multiple residences all joined together by walls, but not by doors or windows. New layers of earth have to be added to the exterior walls constantly to keep them standing. The Taos Indians allow visitors to enter and return for a fee, but the tour they give is limited to certain areas. The community that lives here will eventually die out, and unless the final residents decide to spill the beans, the story of Taos Pueblo will be lost forever. The House of Taga on the island of Tinian in the northern Mariana Islands is notable because it isn't a house. Instead, it's a space where a house used to be. These enormous stones, some of which are standing but many of which have fallen down, are thought to have supported a gigantic house on stilts thousands of years ago, perhaps even in Neolithic times. Back when they were new and complete, the stones were 15 feet tall and topped with hemispherical stones that served as the main supports for a home mostly made from wood and straw. By building their home on stilts, the property's owner would have been safe from most of the threats posed by flooding and local wildlife. Local legends say that a giant called Taga picked up the stones by hand and put them here himself, but the legend might be based on the tale of an ancient chieftain called Taga who built the house to impress a woman he'd fallen in love with on the nearby island of Rota. We have no way of knowing whether that's true, and we probably never will. It's thought that the house was destroyed by an earthquake centuries ago, leaving us only with the stones to remember it by. Wayland's Smithy sounds like a charming name for an English village blacksmith, but it isn't. It's English, all right, and it's in a village, but it's actually a Neolithic era chambered long barrow in Ashbury, Oxfordshire. Mystery surrounds its origins, but the most popular theory is that it was built by a pastoral community 5,600 years ago, not long after the concept of agriculture was introduced to the early Brits by European settlers. Barrows in the style of Wayland Smithy are exclusive to the southwest of Britain and are known as the Severn Cotswold type. Archaeologists say the barrow was made in two stages, a timber-chambered oval barrow at first and then a stone-chambered barrow added around 100 years later. The barrow's unusual name comes from a local 18th century legend which says that if a horse needed shoeing, it could be left at this place tied to the stones with a little money and that by the next morning, the money would be gone, but the horse would be shod. The origin of the story is as mysterious as Wayland Smithy itself. For hundreds of years, nobody knew the Bronze Age Timber Circle in Norfolk, England existed at all. The site has been called Seahenge, although that's a name given to it by the British press and isn't necessarily accurate. 
There's no evidence that this is or was a hinge, but it was definitely made by humans. The circle appeared in 1998 after the sands shifted on a beach called Holm near the town of Kings Lynn, revealing the remnants of the circle with an upside-down tree stump at its center. The oak posts, once 10 feet high, have been dated and shown to be almost 4,000 years old. Back then, this area of land would have been a salt marsh, and the tide would have destroyed the timber if it had been left in place, so the entire circle was extracted from the ground and moved to the Lynn Museum, where it's now on public display. The best guess of historians is that this was a burial site, but that's what they often say about structures they don't understand. From a clock to a calendar, it could have served any number of purposes. Customer service is a frustrating role to work in and a frustrating process to deal with. People who work in customer service roles often despair of the complaints that they receive from customers. The people who make these complaints frequently despair about the quality of the service they receive. Despite what you might think, this is not a problem of the modern world. In fact, it's a problem that's been going on for at least 4,000 years. This ancient Mesopotamian tablet, found in the ancient city of Ur in Iraq, is believed to have been the oldest customer service complaint in the world. It was etched by an artisan named Nani and addressed to a merchant named E. Nasir. Apparently, E. Nasir had sold Nani some poor quality copper ingots and then refused to refund Nani's money. So now, Nani planned to come to visit him to address the matter in person. That sounds like a threat to us. The language used is cuneiform, which is believed to be one of the first written languages to emerge in the Middle East. We wonder whether Nani ever got his money back. You probably think that queuing is an inconvenience of the modern age, but we have a fossil discovery to show you that proves that isn't the case. This is a line of trilobites who were fossilized while following their leader in a line some 480 million years ago. The creatures, known as the cockroaches of the sea, were buried by a sediment avalanche off the coast of Morocco as they went about their journey, and they've been frozen in position ever since. Trilobites were creatures without sight, and so they probably used their spiny protrusions to keep in touch with each other and ensure that they were on course to wherever they needed to go. The fossil is one of the earliest examples of collective behavior ever discovered on Earth. As the species disappeared more than 250 million years ago, it's impossible to talk about their behavior with any certainty, but the fact that their remains are generally found in clusters suggests that they were sociable creatures who existed cooperatively rather than individually. The pattern is similar to the manner in which lobsters migrate today. We can now say that the creatures of Earth have been queuing up patiently almost since life began on our planet. The Nazca Desert of Peru is already famous for the existence of the Nazca Lines, ancient etchings made on the desert floor by unknown hands thousands of years ago. Now it appears that the lines aren't the only form of desert artwork in Nazca. Using drone technology to photograph the desert from new angles, archaeologists have identified a further 50 shapes and drawings spread across the Palpa province. These new drawings, some of which have been described as humanoid monster-like figures, are more weathered than the Nazca lines to the extent that they're almost invisible to the naked eye in some cases. Were it not for advances in technology, we wouldn't be able to see them at all. Because of the degree of weathering, archaeologists don't think they were created by the Nazca culture. Instead, they think it's more likely that the shapes were carved by the Tapara and Paracas cultures who lived here 2,500 years ago. Very little is known about the Tapara people and how, if at all, they're connected to the Paracas and the Nazca. Perhaps these newly discovered glyphs will provide us with more information. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.